All right. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Hello. our May meeting of the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities. I have to always look back on the acronym. Just get it right. Um, and we are still waiting for a few folks that are going to be joining us late, but wanted to get started. Um, I think we should start with minutes. Now, I don't think we, we didn't have any minutes sent out. I think that would be the secretary's job moving forward, right? Yes. And that's you, Cindy, right? Uh, Elaine is the secretary. Elaine, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I mean, I, <laughs> I didn't know if I had said I would, so. <laughs> Elaine said she would. Yes, that's what we have. Well, I'm, I'm glad Jaleen was paying attention because I had, <laughs> okay. So my minutes are flawed is what you're saying. Okay. Um, okay, so Elaine can't talk, so we will have to live in the mystery of knowing about this. Um, I have some cursory notes from our last meeting that I will type up, send out. If people could just add to it, um, that would be great. Then we have an official record, I guess. Um, I guess I will, so we can't, we can't approve the minutes until we get the minutes, so. Why don't we just defer everything till next meeting? Yeah, we will do that. Um, but I do have at least the run of play. So right. uh, I think that's the athletic term, but I think it means that I, I know what we talked about last time. Okay, so the, uh, Tammy, now Tammy, we have a new member here. Tammy, were you officially appointed? No, you... um, no, Paul um, had had me invited to the meeting. So no, I haven't been appointed. Okay. okay. So Tammy is here at least as a member of the public, right? Cause that would be possible anyways. So maybe Tammy, um, let's do a quick introduction of all of ourselves. And then um, Tammy can talk about her background and, and her, um, Awesome expertise. So, Jaleen, do you want to start? Yes, I'm Jaleen Patino, um, therapeutic recreation therapeutic recreation supervisor, <laughs> uh, the town of Weathersfield. Um, I've been here for a little over six months now, so I'm still fairly new and trying to get a feel for everything, and that's all. <laughs> Good. How about John? Yeah, uh, my name is John Beretta. I'm the treasurer of the group and um, basically retired and that's about it. Living the dream. You betcha. And John, can you um, give Tammy some background about how you got involved in the group? Oh, I, well, I have a, a daughter, uh, Kimberly Beretta, which Tim, Kimmy's gotta be uh, 41. She's in a group home now in uh, Windsor. And she's basically been through the Weathersfield school system and Weathersfield therapeutic rec. And so it's kind of like a little guilt feeling if I don't get involved. So I'm kind of here because of what's what the town has done for me. So hopefully I can help somebody else down the road. That's about it. So it's from a place of paying it forward, maybe, instead of, instead of the guilt. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, Adam, please. Uh, Adam Sauce here. Sorry, it's so dark in this room. I don't, not much light in here. Um, I'm a web developer um, at Manchester Community College right now and a web uh, accessibility specialist. Um, I joined the group because I, I just moved to Weathersfield, me and my wife, about uh, a little over a year ago. And I want to get involved in a town committee. And it just so happens that I'm also interested in. Uh, helping people with disabilities when I can. So this was the perfect, perfect match. Thanks, Adam. Um, Cindy, please. Yeah, I'm Cindy Jacobs and uh, I've lived in Weathersfield since 1985. And my kids uh, went through the public school system. They're all grown up now. And uh, I have a daughter who's um, 30 and she's special needs. She went through the, um, 
uh, special ed in the, in the in the town. So I'm familiar with that. So I just like would like to be a part of this. I am retired now. All right, you guys don't have to keep bragging about it because it's really hard. <laughs> uh, Chris, please. Yeah, um, my name is Chris Taylor. I'm the uh, elderly services coordinator for the town and uh, uh, veteran services coordinator and uh, municipal agent. And uh, <laughs> we wear all kinds of hats, but I've been on the committee for many, many years and I'm here to help in any way as the staff lays on to the committee. We help people every day with disabilities and people 60 and older. So we're here for to help this committee in any uh, mission that it has. Thanks, Chris. Um, Thank you. And then I guess Elaine is here, but can't talk, right? Elaine, okay. If she's here, we know she's amongst us. Okay, Paul, perfect timing. Hi, everyone. Um, are you guys seeing me? You're living in grass right now, like uh, in a field of grass. Yeah, this is David's Zoom again. Um, again, David was on this computer. It's a cat uh, thing all over again. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe I'll just turn this off for now. But I'm Paul Brady. I'm co-chair with Catherine. Um, I, well, I switch agencies, so now I work at the State Elections Enforcement Commission instead of uh, last time I you guys are, you guys knew of me working at the LOB, but I transferred, so that's a new one. Um, and I, I joined, well, I'm very interested in actually giving back to my community. Uh, besides the personal aspect of this committee that I have a nephew that's autistic and a godson that's autistic, um, I like to um, give back. It's my belief that giving back is something that you should do um, whenever you get the opportunity to. And this committee uh, gives me that opportunity to do so. But not only that, it is a bit more personal because, like I said, I have a a nephew and a have um, well multiple nephews I should say and a godson that's autistic. Um, so this committee is really near and dear to my heart. Okay, um, when you guys know me, Catherine Meyer, I'm an attorney at a nonprofit called the Center for Children's Advocacy, and I work mainly with children with disabilities and helping them uh, advocate for what they need in school. I work for only low income children and families. So I am in a lot of different, very challenged uh, and under resourced school districts and trying to make change on both an individual and systemic level uh, in a variety of ways, legal ways, I should, I should say. And very happy to welcome Tammy, who came on uh, Paul's invite. Paul, I don't know if you want to give an intro or let her go herself. I'm sorry to just jump in, but I have. They left, sorry. I had somebody in the waiting room that was um, about to join. I was thought it was somebody else that um, we invited. Sorry. Okay, we'll wait. Maybe they'll come back. Oh, you need your son. I think he's... <laughs> Okay, so Paul knows Tammy. He invited her here because she has a lot of expertise. I had the pleasure of meeting with her and getting to know some of her story and her um, and all the amazing work. Okay, Paul, there you go. Uh, yeah, uh, David Zoom is not cooperating with me here, but um, yeah, Tammy and I met through the uh, Yukon PEP program, which uh, we both attended this year, which just ended actually. Um, and Tammy has a lot of experience with working with um, people and children with disabilities. So I thought she would be a good resource for this committee. So um, I'll let her, I won't, I won't spoil her intro by giving everything. So Tammy, I'll let you, I'll let you do the talking for more. Thank you. Um, 
So uh, I'm Tammy. Um, I've been here in Weathersfield for about 10 years. Um, my I have two children that are, uh, well, one has gone through the Weathersfield public school system and my youngest is going through now. Um, both of my children, uh, one is deaf, the other is hard of hearing. And so we have spent quite a bit of time working directly with the um, special education department here uh, in our schools. Um, actually really spending a lot of time educating them about um, deaf education and, and how to support uh, children with hearing loss. Um, since it's such a low incidence disability, um, uh, 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 many educators um, have, have never actually had a child with hearing loss. Um, so it's been, it's been a very interesting challenge. Um, I also am the, uh, one of the co-founders and the current president of Connecticut Hands and Voices. And it is a nonprofit um, organization that supports families that have children um, that are deaf and hard of hearing and deaf hard of hearing plus. So we uh, we spend a lot of time uh, working with um, parents, um, developing advocacy skills, making sure they have access to resources, participating in school meetings. Um, we do a lot of trainings for parents and also sh social events as well uh, that uh, engages the families and the kids um, who are on very similar paths um, as far as, as dealing with hearing loss. I work um, directly with the uh, Department of Public Health and their EDI program, the Early Hearing Detection and Intervention. And um, we collect data and work with families across the state as part of that program. Um, and I have two trained parent guides that are actually assigned to families once their children um, receive their diagnoses. And, uh, and those parents help, um, the parent guides help the, um, the families sort of navigate the path that they're on and finding where the three services that are appropriate for them, uh, making sure that they're connected with specialty programs such as the American School for the Deaf or SoundBridge. Um, so we, uh, it's a, it's a great opportunity to work with this organization and, um, and I'm looking forward to, um, to getting more involved, um, in, in this committee and, um, in, in town, uh, overall as well, because I do so much at a state level, but I'd really like to bring it down to a town level. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, just a bit of a housekeeping here, guys. For the people that aren't speaking, if you don't mind putting your microphones on mute, we're getting the echo back and it's kind of disruptive. Thank you. Um, so I guess um, moving along the schedule here, um, uh, Catherine, did you, I, I know I missed the first part because I was like six or 10 minutes late. So yeah, so I um, we just briefly touched on the fact that there are no minutes, but we're going to create minutes as a team building exercise. So I am going to type out what I have and then everybody can add what they have and then we can all approve it together. Um, but I do have notes to work off of and I know a couple of us do about um, you know things that we wanted to, to you know, bring us threads along. Um, the first thing, if I can start, is I know uh, I know Natalie had mentioned she would look for a mission statement if there was one. Um, Jillian, do you know anything about that? Yes, I thought I sent it out. I apologize oh, if I didn't. Maybe you did. Maybe I will be apologize. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. I have the mission statement. Okay. Salem. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. April April sixth. It looks like it was an email. With a few attachments. Thank you so much. Okay. No problem. One step ahead. So, I mean, I guess my question is, can we, can we talk about this? Is it open to adaptation? Is it something that we want to at least use for, you know, a foundation and then we can kind of build off of it? But I think it's important because I, as this group is um, changing changing direction or, or sh you know shaping in a different way, we need to start about what what our purpose is, what our goals are. We know what the group has traditionally done, but let's go back to the um, the foundation of what it was created to do. So, I guess I should read it. 
um, in case people don't have it on hand. Uh, the mission is to assist and give a voice to town residents with disabilities by providing a forum to discuss issues and opportunities. That's the mission. Um, the overview is that the Wethersfield Advisory Committee for Persons with Disabilities is a town committee comprised of residents and town liaisons. The committee provides guidance and resources for community involvement, job access, education, and education with the intent that the town remains a welcoming and inclusive community for all residents. So to assist and give a voice by providing a forum to discuss issues and opportunities. So I think that's kind of in line. We've been talking about, you know, having a couple roles of uh, being a place for advocacy uh, and being a place for gathering of resource and um, I guess opportunities and, and and probably along those lines, helping to publicize and helping to um, reach out to those who traditionally might not have been, uh, might, who might be underserved or who might not be, have been um, in that central group. Cindy, did you go off mute? Do you wanna say something? Yeah, when I hear discussing um, issues and opportunities, is that right? Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm being a little picky here, but I think the discuss would go with the word opportunities too, and, and we want to do more than discuss opportunities. So maybe and create opportunities. So discuss right. issues and create opportunities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think when I hear assist and give a voice to, again, I, I interpret that in my own lens of give a voice to is, is advocate for and advocate for, for more, for more opportunities for enhanced access. Um, and also to make sure that folks who are, um, who have disabilities are on our committee as we traditionally have had. Um, and I know a few of those, of those folks had to move on um, and went elsewhere. But I think that's super important that we have the voice of those most directly affected those, you know, themselves um, to be part of the committee. What do, what do folks think about that? Or what are some um, outreach efforts we might be able to do? Like I know just for people who are new, so, um, and John can speak this better than I could, but we had um, a gentleman who, um, you know, used a wheelchair. We had a woman who was blind and came with her seeing eye dog. Um, and there were at least one or two others that would sometimes come to meetings and say, yeah, this sidewalk has been really hard for me, or I couldn't get that book in Braille. Um, and just a place for, for them to feel connected and like they could advocate for themselves. I, I definitely agree with having, yeah, people with, with uh, disabilities on, on the group. I'm just relating it to sort of when it comes to web design and, and development, you can have sort of your own opinion of all oh, this based on these standards, this might make it easier for, you know, for, for someone who's blind to use a screen reader on the site, but still, it's always a, an absolute requirement to have, you know, user testing with an actual, an actual blind person, try to use it. And your, your opinions might be completely, completely off. Um, so getting, getting an actual word from, you know, from the people who are, who are having these experiences. And um, I definitely think that would be a big help. I, I yeah, like you said, I know there was a there was a blind individual. I think he was in like the two two meetings ago. Was he here? Or? Yeah, I I think you're right. I I I know the uh, I think the the girl that we had last year moved. I think. Yeah, she moved. Okay. Yeah, and then the uh, the individual that was in a wheelchair passed away. Yeah. Okay. So I think right now we have just one uh, blind person on the committee. Yeah. And I think it would be good if we can, I don't know if we can get any, uh, someone in a wheelchair or I, I would think as far as the um, students, I think we have quite a few parents, you know, parents that are involved on the committee that have children in, in the school system and stuff like that. So, I think we got that in pretty well covered. I, I just think that the, uh, I think the blind uh, 
may, we have someone for deaf now and uh, basically wheelchair would be good for yeah. some input to the committee if we can get anybody that way, uh, get anybody to join. Yeah, I, I mean, I would suggest we, I'm sorry, my house is truly so loud. Um, I would suggest that we could have, we, we could invite any, any young people too, any um, high school students, um, and also to include, um, you know, folks with traditionally hidden disabilities, right? So folks with um, mental health issues, um, you know, other kinds of other kinds of things that might not be as readily apparent, but um, whose voice would also be really important in this. So maybe we just put in the minutes um, for everyone to kind of consider who they might invite as a member of the public. Um, and, um, you know, there's there's an opportunity for them to speak or even just to just to be part of the, the you know, participate in any way they feel comfortable. If we can each think of somebody or at least um, make that attempt, I think that would be really important. I don't know, Tammy, do you have any thoughts that's on that? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, I think, um, I think it's really important that um, it is a diverse group that represents um, on this committee. Um, I think, you know, sending out some kind of communication to um, the town as a whole, as far as, you know, advertising opportunities to be a part of, of this organization to, um, you know, that is supporting um, people with disabilities. I love the idea about adding younger people as well. I think that when you are talking about um, students that do have disabilities, the the younger that they're able to represent themselves um, and to and to share their voice, I think the better. Um, I think that that those are future leaders who will be making um, significant contributions um, to society if we if we give them these kind of opportunities. So I absolutely love the idea of of getting some students on here as well. I think it would be great. And for a lot of, um, you know, for a lot of teens and, you know, kids with dis, uh, IEPs, they have as one of their goals, self-advocacy, right? And so um, working on how to advocate for themselves in that with their own school program, with their own teachers, asking for help, making their needs known and um, understanding their own disability, understanding, you know, what, what challenges they have and what um, all the, you know, all their strengths as well. So I think, you know, this could be a really great opportunity for any young person. Of course, we'd have to um, reach out in a way that would be appropriate and and uh, mindful of, of people's um, capabilities and sensitivities. But I think that that be, could be a really good opportunity for, for young people. So I'm gonna write in the minutes since I, we're all writing the minutes together here, um, that we all agree that we need some um, diverse representation of um, young people and adults with different disabilities and um, that we will just kind of put our thinking caps on. And if, if you think of anyone, um, you know, feel free to email the group and say, hey, I've invited this person. Let's make them feel welcome at our next meeting. Um, and that way in this weird virtual space, we can be as welcoming as, in, in, as inclusive as possible like we would be if we were in person. It, you know, maybe we don't have to have them as part of the committee, but maybe we could pick individuals in the school system or I, I, I'm not in touch with the school systems now, but uh, where we could have someone speak or come to our meetings and speak and see if there's any concerns that they have. Yeah. Uh, instead of, you know, I can see how it could be difficult to get some young people as part of the committee, but. I would think you can get them probably to speak at it to see what they're what they're looking for, basically. So uh, that might be another route we can take too. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. I think I had that more in my, in my mind of they could come and be the public comment section or at yeah. least listen in. But yeah. yeah, I definitely agree that that's a place to start. And if they want to get more involved, then we can see what the next steps might be. Yeah. It's a good idea. Yeah, I would think that would be a good idea to do. All right. 
Okay, well, my next, oh, please, Adam. Oh, I'll, I'll just, sorry, if you can hear a dog barking, I don't know, she's very small but loud. Um, I liked uh, Tammy's idea sort of like a, a public notice or outreach sort of thing, but I'm not sure what the typical like way of, of doing that would would be, you know, like I'm assuming it's not like putting it in a newspaper um, or something like that, but like through the, for students anyway, like through the school system somehow, if, if like their parents get notices or something. I, I haven't been in, you know, I don't really remember how that kind of stuff works. I, I, I know she's not in the meeting tonight, but I would think Natalie would be our best resource for contacting people to yeah. get in front of this committee because she knows, a, uh, I mean, nothing against you, Jay, but she's been here a long time and she knows a lot of people in this town. So I, I would think to pick her brain would probably be our, our first first step. Yeah, I think that that's that's a really good idea, John. I, I was actually thinking along the lines that maybe we could probably use the library as a resource. Um, I know uh, through probably um, their social media page and whatever social media is available uh, for um, the, for Parks and Rec um, as it relates to young people. Uh, the uh, so, social media platform, I think, would be it the the outlet to do that on um as you know and and if we could uh the local newspaper would probably if we could put something in that too would probably w work as far as because while a younger person may look at their phone an older person may be more inclined to pick up the newspaper on a sunday evening or something and read it so um you really want to capture everyone or give everyone the opportunity to participate um, along those lines. Uh, I know the last time also, just to Wait, kind sorry, of back. Paul. Sorry, Paul, do, do we wanna just see if anybody wants to um, be assigned this task for like follow-up? And or we could do it, but if anybody else wants to kind of do a little bit of the legwork and report back, um, even via email, if they say, hey, these are the different outlets, um, this is the flyer I was looking at. Can you, you want to send it off to everybody for input? I, I was just, sorry, I just, another thought came up when we were talking about like having them as, as committee members versus just sort of, uh, um, voicing, you know, voicing their needs that the, the committee has like a limit of, of actual members that there can be like a certain number of, I think it's by, right. By political affiliation, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't know what the number is, though. I think it might be actually full. So, I, I just I think if we're going to invite some people, I think Natalie is probably the person, the go-to person. And rather than kind of calling it out in a public forum, where we're looking for disabled people. I just think that's a little awkward. I, I think if you're going to invite somebody, let's just have Natalie contact some some people. She might think that uh, would welcome this or have in mind and and invite them. And if we want to have a speaker, let's say once a month or something like that. Yeah, Cindy. I, yeah, I think you're right on that. You're absolutely right on that, Cindy. And um, just to clear up where I was going, I, I was going along the lines of advertising to make ourselves more visible. Uh, I don't know how many people in town really knows that we have a meeting tonight. Right? Yeah. And that's a good point. That, and, and that is really what I want to, um, you know, push more than anything else. Because if people in town knew that we were having a meeting tonight, for those folks that have concerns, I'm sure they would make an effort to either uh, call in on their phones or um, join a Zoom link for the public comment section. Uh, you know, <clears throat> so far we have we have had what, maybe two or three meetings, and we've not had any, anyone from the public to say, you know, I have an issue that um, this is what's going on and how can you guys help us? That's really what we're here for. So uh, that's something that I would like to put out there to be more visible in town and to get people to actually uh, want to come and participate just like they do when 
we have the budget or anything else that's going on in town hall. These are subcommittees of that. But we should be able to get things together and say, OK, there's a budget hearing tonight. And people are saying that they think that we need a ramp at this school or something because it's not accessible to certain kids. Like That's really the type of thing that we want to be doing. And um, so when I said uh, to use social media and stuff, I was pushing along that, those lines to be more visible in town than just inviting people with disabilities, I should say. Thanks for the clarification. I I, I misunderstood. So. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I should have articulated that better. So thank you for thank you yeah, for. And that. I think that's a no, and that's a really good idea, because if people knew about the committee, then they would, you know, they'd be more inclined to call in. And I think people don't. And so yeah, it. I think that's a good idea. I support it. So I was thinking as I was walking around bikes on Maine this weekend, as I'm sure many of us were, wouldn't it be great to have a bicycle that represented our committee? I know we're a little late, but that that would be such a good idea. And we could have something that really shows it's like super inclusive and adaptable and all the things we would want a vehicle to look like. This feels like it might be too late, but at least. That sounds like a next year project. I know. Okay. Okay. But that is definitely a next year project. So let's all put that in the back of our minds. Um, there's so many ways you could do it, you know? Thank you for bringing me back to reality. Okay. Um, I have for the next kind of item that we talked about, I know um, Mr. Karzar was here last meeting and we got a little bit into, um, you know, education questions. I have specifically on my list uh, questions about chronic absenteeism amongst kids with disabilities and, and the uh, engagement for kids, you know, during and now after, you know, at the end stages of pandemic life, now that obviously we're all back in person. Um, questions about how kids with disabilities were served during the pandemic and, um, and then questions about how uh, the federal funds can, you know, the federal funds that have been received and are now you know, increasing greatly in number um, will be used for summer remediation programs um, to deal with staffing issues and then some of the, the tech issues, you know, uh, technological literacy. Um, he talked, we talked about hardware, we talked about Wi Fi. So, all those different items I know that we hit, um, I don't think we got really concrete information. I mean, I know, I know ways to access it just based on my, my job, but um, I would like to ask him if everyone's in agreement for the next meeting, I have like a list of questions I could put forth and say, if you don't mind coming to the next meeting and just sharing some of the data points on, on these items, um, I can send my questions to you guys first, if you guys wanna add to them. Sure, I, I, I would second that, but I, I something popped in my head here, um, if you don't mind, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, I, was thinking of if we could also possibly invite the superintendent for our next meeting. I would be very interested to know what's being put in place for uh, students with disabilities for those summer programs and how that's being handled. Um, I know. A lot uh, of money. A lot yeah. of money. <laughs> I mean, kids are falling behind. It doesn't matter if they're um, if they have disabilities or not. But I'm curious to find out what how it's being structured for the kids with disabilities and um you know i really don't want i could see how in the in the push of things how some areas or some things could fall through the cracks and we really don't want to have that so i think that that's something that we should probably uh, you know start asking questions about now uh as to what's being put in place and um so that kids with disabilities are able to actually function um, properly through the summer. And it's not, oh, this is our first time we're running this program and we didn't know this was going to happen. And, you know, we, uh, after everything that has happened for the last year, I think that every kid that's going to go to summer school or whatever it is, needs a something smooth, um, something to go right for, you know, something to go right for them as it relates to their educational development. And I think that that is something that we really need to 
ask those questions on. Well, yeah, how about that's... inviting both of them? This is both, you know, you're going to have the town lays on guy and you have the, this way here, you can see what they're going to do basically for the parks and rec end of it. And then you have the superintendent to find out what they're going to do for the, the students. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I think, I, I think they should, I think they should both be here and we could, you know, we could have the opportunity to ask questions and hopefully we, um, we get something out and we could at least have people from the public here is to in the public comment sections to say what they um you know what's on their mind and at some point maybe those questions can be addressed that you know so yeah i mean i think we i think we can invite them with some pre you know send, sending some questions ahead of time just to be thoughtful and that way they they don't feel you know on, on the defensive or um sometimes i have that impact on people in my life, in my lawyering life. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a letter. Maybe you'll get a letter with the answers instead of in person. <laughs> well, they'll come in person and, and share that. And then, no, then everyone, we can open it up for, for discussion. But, um, you know, I, I can send out a little information to all you guys too about like what some of the process points are for the funding and what they have to do in planning for the funding. Um, because there are some sec there are some segments of that that are being made public for each town as well through the State Department of Ed. I know that after the last meeting, uh, John John Carzar shared a, a Google Doc with all of us where we could add our questions for him. Yep. Um, so we could just we keep adding our questions to that. Um, I, I was thinking he was going to be at this meeting too because he said um, questions that he wanted me to address at the next at the next WACPD meeting. But um, perfect. Okay. I would have. I was gonna just paste the link to that document again, but I don't think our Zoom has. I know has why though. That right now. I don't know because it's recording. I don't know, but. Okay. Thank you. I just added a couple of questions to that document as well, so if we could just have them all in one place, and then and he has he has access to it too. I'm assuming because he's the one that um, created and shared it. So. Thank you for highlighting that. Perfect. Um. Yes, I have as our goals that we want to increase visibility and increase accountability for the systems that serve folks with disabilities. There you go, we're hitting all the themes. Um, the last tangible thing I had, I know we talked about this resource booklet and um, Natalie talked about needing to update the paper copy of the resource booklet. We talked about putting it online, but we talked about also having it available as a paper booklet. That was my recollection. Um, anybody remember any more detail about that? I think you're spot on. I know too bad. I, I mean, if, too bad Natalie's not here. She could probably give us more insight onto what's happening with that. Well, it sounded like she needed help updating it. Because I remember thinking we must have some, we must have a town intern somewhere that could be great at that. Or we could we um, tap into any of the high school um, clubs or you know leadership clubs that might be able to help support an effort like that. Or they have community service, right? Whether school, high school hours. So maybe. Um, Jaleem, I think you probably know more kids than, I mean, the kids I know are all like in first grade, they can't do much. So maybe maybe other people know some teens in town that are looking for hours. Um, that might be a good place to start. Consider maybe you have some peer, um, peer groups, sorry, peer peers that help with the Special Olympics or some of the rec programs that might, I guess that counts for their service though, does it? When they accompany you as a peer? I think it depends um, <clears throat> if they need hours for school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But that might be a good place to start. You and Adley, yeah, and not to, you know, of course we can all, we can all do our own um, outreach, but that might be a group of young people who are interested in the subject. Hey, hopefully it, um, it starts out as a as a word document and whoever's doing the 
the updating wouldn't have to, you know, try to edit the PDF for the online version because that's always a big um, editing a PDF is is just a challenge. Um, but I, I, um, I said last time as well when when it's all finalized and ready to to go online, um, I could help out with sort of reviewing it for reviewing the PDF for um, accessibility with with screen readers and. If it's if it's a real if it's a real big project, then um, I don't know if we could look into some funding like from the town for hiring a. There are third party companies that that do just that. They help and make sure your your website and your PDFs are accessible, um, which could open a whole new can of can of worms and um, checking the whole the whole Weathersfield Town website um, for accessibility and and PDFs and things like that. Thanks, Adam. That's really helpful. Yeah, I mean, I, I just remember her, the way she discussed it last time sounded like she thought it was really, really out of date. So who knows if it's almost starting from scratch. I mean, who knows, she, you know, I don't know what, what level of review we're looking at, but it sounds like there's enough interest to put the time in. So since Natalie isn't here, I, would say, do you want us to just table this again? And um, maybe Jillian, if you could reach out to her and, and um, let her know, um, we could probably email during the week about this uh, as to what she needs and kind of take it from there. Uh, I would be willing to do some stuff on it if it needs to be updated. Um, I, I'm i trying to think here whether or not I have that version of Acrobat to actually edit things, but I should be able to, and if not, I probably could get some, I could probably get some of the resources to try and edit the PDF it needs to be, but um, I would be willing to help her. So if, if we could email back and forth uh, probably during the week about this, I think that would probably make better sense because Obviously, she's not here right now, and so we don't know where to really start without her as it relates to that. You, you can involve me in those emails too if you if you want. Just if I could help with, um, like starting out with with making it a little bit more comfortable, especially if it has to be started from the beginning. Um, there's just considerations that that could make it more accessible from the beginning, like, you know, adding descriptive text to, to images if they're important and checking text contrast and things like that. I guess, Jillian, this email that is gonna go out is going to be mm -hmm. inclusive of Adam, um, Catherine, myself, and Natalie. Um, well, to keep Catherine in the loop and, but I guess so far Adam and I are volunteering to help with it so um, we could kind of go back and forth as to who's doing what and uh, move along and as it relates to that. Um, Jillian, just thinking about, well, I was just thinking about Natalie who you said is at a track meet, right? And I was uh, no, just- No, it's track practice, sorry. Track practice, oh, okay. Yes, we have it. I was just thinking now that, you know, knock on wood, we're able to do more things in person. Um, it'd be great if as a group, you know, we went and went to a game or went to support any, any of the stuff that you guys are doing in person. I think it'd be really nice to show our support of what you're doing and to just, you know, put our faces out there a little bit. I know, I know I'd love to bring my kids and um, they promise to not disrupt the entire <laughs> And I just, I just think it'd be nice to show, you know, to show you guys that we appreciate what you do. Okay. Yeah, we have a few things going on. Um, we have tennis on Sundays, we have track on Mondays. Um, and I just recently signed both groups up for the um, summer games. And that falls on June 19th and June 20th at, I wanna say Fairfield University, but I can double check that. And, get it out to everyone we got the golf start no yes. yep and the golf is starting too yeah. yeah 
Yeah. And so anything, I mean, out of respect for what you're doing, I don't want to, we don't want to just show up at something to be distracting. So any, anything that would be appropriate for spectators, okay. maybe you could let us know um, what would be most appropriate and maybe we could get a group of us together to show support. And if you say it's too, you know, it's too distracting, just come to the games or, you know, whatever you say, we, we understand, but I just want to put that out there. Any other business anybody wants to bring up? Um, I know the last meeting we spoke about the group home liaison. Thank you. Um, I've, I've tried reaching out to Mosaic, who's like the company that I guess runs the one on um, Meadowgate, which is, which is right down the street from my house. And I guess the, the previous person on there, Karen Hoke, um, she must not work there anymore because she's not in the directory. And I, I, I just couldn't get anybody on the phone from from Mosaic. I've tried three times. No, so I'll, I'll keep, um, I'll keep trying. But um, yeah, the, the main point is just to get is just to get the correct contact for. Yeah, I look oh. online too for their on their main website too, and I called and I left a voicemail too, and I haven't gotten any calls back. But um. I'm yeah, they're, they're tough. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why. This is the, I, I'm calling the place. I think it's right in Rocky Hill, like their office there. Um, I I had I had the same problem with uh, the one on Prospect. I've I, I've called. I left a message. Apparently, didn't want to. Nobody called me back. So what I think about doing is uh, going to the organization that's running the running the group home and talking to them. I'm just waiting for some information back on that, you know, yeah. that way. But it seems like at least the one I'm having, they're very reluctant to talk to you. So I, I don't know what the, the problem is, but hopefully in the next month we'll find out. Well, I wonder if it would, would it make sense for us to do I don't know if it's an email or something all together that just says, like explains to them what we're trying to do up front. So of course, if you got them on the line, you would try to explain that to them. But if they're not picking up your the number, maybe they're not realizing what, what the intention is. In, in my case, I, I the uh, person that was working for that day, I told her what I, who I was, what I represented and yeah. what the purpose of all this was. And she said, I'll have Scott call you back and Scott called me back. So uh, either she didn't give him the message or I, I don't, I, like I said, I don't know what happened, but it, I think if you start from the top, maybe you might be better off. You might have a better chance of these guys calling you back. Yeah, I, was, uh, sorry. I was successful with mine. I, I called the uh, Hark um, on 50 Eastern Drive, and uh, I, I was like you, John. I wasn't able to get in touch with my contact person on that list, but I did finally, after maybe several attempts, I contacted a Christina Sweet. She's the coordinator, yeah. and she was very enthusiastic and uh, interested in our, our, our meeting. And uh, she said this, uh, she didn't mention that the residents felt very isolated and lonely. And she was looking like for board games, crafts. So I referred her to JLM for the grant. But she was very pleasant to talk with and very interested. And I did read her the mission statement of the committee. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully I can get that information and I can start from the top and then work my way down, I guess. Mm -hmm. sounds, like, sounds like you're a good ambassador, Chris. I try anyways it's it's persistence Kathy <laughs> I'm stop persistence <laughs> I get that 
Um, yeah, it would just, I guess, I guess that's part of our question, right? Is like, what can we do to help folks feel less isolated? And um, there's, there's a whole bunch of considerations there. I know we talked about this a little bit about, of course, the residents and what the restrictions they have in, in order to keep them safe and to keep you know, all, all the different kinds of liabilities they have in that situation. But any, any ways that we can safely provide support or connection or let them know that we're thinking of them, I think is the intention. Mm -hmm. So um, does Natalie have, besides that information, those contacts that we got, do you guys have a more direct one? Like, do you reach out to them when you do some of your programming or? Um... Um, so far, that's the only thing that I've been working off of when reaching out to them. Um, I can write that down and ask her as well if there's another way to contact people. Yeah, and she had mentioned, or I think maybe you had mentioned, right, that you sometimes you have some of some of the residents join you in different activities, or do they make that up? Um, we do have like the local residents join and stuff, but as far as the group homes go, um, a lot of them opted out of um, activities. I would say just based yeah. off of everything. A lot of them said that they were going to wait until um, I want to say with the vaccine and stuff like that, and wait until yeah. things actually clear up. I know in the past they've always come to the Thanksgiving uh, dinner we had, the, the Christmas party we've had. So they do come to our func the functions that the uh, town puts on. It's just a matter of, I, with this pandemic, I can see why they're keeping them home. I think my daughter was in home for at least six months before she was, you know, were able to take her out. So. I can understand that, but I, I think it, once once we start with this uh, the Thanksgiving stuff and the Christmas stuff, I'm sure these group homes will be coming to that. So I guess it's just a matter of time we can get them out. Kathy, can I can I mention something? Yes. Oh, sorry, Chris. It's Catherine. Catherine, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to mention there's a new um, transportation service. I don't know if the committee's aware of it. It's a federal transportation called M7 Ride, M, M as in Mary, 7 Ride. And you apply for the Encompass program. Okay. Uh, it's a federally funded to people to provide seniors and people with disabilities with affordable transportation. Mm. Rides are as low as $5. And you have to go, it's a uh, partnership with the Greater Hartford Transit. So you could actually give them a call at 860-247-5329. And they travel anywhere, anytime, 365 days, seven days a week without restrictions. And the first eight miles are $5. Every additional mile is $2. And they take up to three people to travel with if one is a member, Encompass member. So I just wanted to mention that it's a, a new, fairly new service. It's uh, federally funded and uh, hopefully, yeah. you know, somebody will benefit from this. So I think this, to me, this would be the perfect kind of thing going back to what Paul was saying before. If we had a, a Facebook page or if we had, this is the kind of stuff we want to put out there as kind of updates to get the word out. So um mm -hmm. perhaps we might do that and then we can make some of these things public and of course there's all these new new opportunities um to access kinds of new programs that'll be that'll be rolling out so well do we have anybody in town that's actually seeking out those that funding this, this is already um, this is already established through the Greater Hartford Transit, and I know if somebody calls us in social and youth services, we're giving that out, you know, all the time. Oh, okay. So it's already in town. It's it's already it's in town. Yeah, yeah. It's already funded. Yeah, yeah it's there. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of yeah. letting people know they can have a ride. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. You always have the scoop. 
<laughs> if you want me to talk, I have more information, but, you know, there's pl plenty for you to discuss today. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Chris, do you have like a senior center Facebook page? We we don't have a senior center Facebook, but, you know, um, I know many of the uh, committees do have, uh, you know, they put their minutes on the town website. And I think the VA com uh, commission, if I can mention that, you know, has just uh, started a newsletter and they're sending that out to the veterans in town. So, you know, different committees are doing different things to disseminate information. How do you get your information out to seniors besides like, the ones you work yeah, with? Anyway? The, the, yeah, the senior center does have a newsletter. So, you know, I give my information from social and youth services to Amy. Okay. And then Amy, you know, get, gets it disseminated. So maybe if at all possible, we could um, connect with Amy somehow and have Amy kind of disseminate um, when our meeting is through these groups because we, I'm here in veterans and seniors and these are all folks that you need to know about at this committee that we exist and that we have meetings at certain times. Um, that's a group of people that need to know that we're here. Um, that's a good suggestion. So if we at least have our meeting schedule in their, um, in their newsletter and whatever informational that they have going out, I think would be a good thing. And I know the park and rec recreations also has a uh, booklet that they put out of all their oh, activities. Yeah. And, yeah. That is a hotly anticipated booklet for parents. Yeah. It comes off the press and we read it cover to cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very exciting. Yes, especially now there's camperships happening for the summer. Yes. Yes, so, you know, people are looking into that, yep. Yeah. So we need to have our meeting um, scheduled uh, in, in, in that booklet also. Um, you know, I think every resource that's in town that will give us, um, that will help us make us visible is, it, it's, it's, we definitely need to uh, take advantage of that so that people know that we're here and that we're here to help. That's a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I, I know that we're, we're already in the, um, you know, the, the paper calendar booklet. Um, it shows our it shows our meeting dates, but it, you know it just shows the acronym the WACPD. So if if a lot of people are like me when they first see their acronym, acronym I thought it was like involving the police department. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know the full having the full name on that little on that little date square is probably too long. So, um, but we are we are in that in that calendar because I have it hanging on my fridge. So that's one place we're in. Yeah, and just like. Welcome parents, welcome, welcome residents, welcome, just kind of that, that welcoming message, come one, come all, be heard, share your concerns, hear the newest updates, give us input as to what you think we need that we don't have. That's what we're trying to solicit. Okay, I think we're at, we're about time. What do, what do you think, Tammy? Like I'm putting you on the spot again, but I know you're a nice person, so sorry. No, no, I think I think all of this sounds really good. Um, I think getting um, more awareness of this committee is is key um, to to two things. One, um, making sure that people in town know that they have a resource, they have a place to get resources, um, and um, look for support, and then also that I do feel like having been in Weathersfield for 10 years with two children with disabilities um, and not knowing about this organization at all, um, I think we can do better. I think, I think there are a lot of things in town that the people who are directly related to it think that, yep, everybody knows about us, but in fact, many people in the community don't. I mean, not just us in general, but I mean, just organizations in town. And I think we, you know, we could 
we could do things like maybe, you know, write, write up an article, have a Facebook page, um, hold an event this summer, um, you know, at the library, you know, do something at, in a park or at the library where we're sharing information about what this organization is, who encompasses it and who uh, we are there to support. All of that, I think gets the word out. Um, and I, and I think, you know, you've already targeted people, certain people within town that I think can continue to share that message in a, in a really strong way. So um, I would definitely like to be a part of that um, if there is, if, if there is an opportunity for me to do that. So yeah, just, you know, let me know what next steps are and, and I, I'd be more than happy to, to participate in however I can. Thank you, Tammy. And it just reminds me that we should, um... This is kind of the tack that we're taking that, you know, that we should, which we should be taking, that we should go to the, the SEFTA and go to the special education, you know, parent teachers organizations. There's, you know, some at every school and then there's some, there's a townwide one. Um, that's an easy way for us to talk to a lot of super smart involved parents of children with disabilities um, who know what's up. So that, that could be a, a speaking tour. We could do. I think Tammy would be great at it too. Okay, should we close up shop, Paul? So before you close up, just so everyone's on the same page, can we just recap what everyone, uh, what's expected and what we're going to be working on in the follow coming following up to the next meeting? Um, just to be clear. You want me to do that? Go for it. Okay. I will consult my minutes. Uh, first, we do indeed have the mission statement, and sounds like it's it could you know be tweaked a little bit. Sounds like there's want to be a little bit more clear about advocacy and, as Cindy said, generating opportunity, um, creating opportunity and access. Right. A little more active verbs, perhaps. Uh, we talked about just building general visibility. And so um, it sounds like we want to you know, show folks who we are and also publicize meeting dates and say, we wanna hear your questions, concerns. Um, and we have a few different places to do that. So potentially a Facebook page, uh, working with the library, looking for different channels through other social media, um, some of the newsletters that Chris mentioned and uh, the Parks and Rec booklet. Those are just some starting points. And then also the special education parent-teacher organizations. Um, so, okay. So that sounds like that's something that Paul and I will follow up on. I guess that general visibility point, that sounds good, okay. Secondly, um, creating our questions for John Carzar for next meeting, which Adam pointed our attention to the Google Doc. And uh, so we should all be putting our questions on that Google Doc link that we can recirculate if we need to and asking the superintendent to come to that meeting. And again, if we can get parents at that meeting, that is the point of public comment for them to be able to call in, ask questions of the superintendent. Um, and maybe we focus some of that on like you said, summer programming, uh, remediation, and getting students with, with disabilities kind of where, where we want them to be after the pandemic. Um, the third major item is the resource booklet. Um, and we need to first talk to Natalie about where, that's, where that is living and in what form that document is in. Adam and Paul will be offering themselves as resources. And Jaleem has going to write an email to connect that all with Natalie. Then we talked about ways to support therapeutic rec. So um, we have a few dates and Jaleem and Natalie will let us know the most appropriate places for us to cheer them on. And we talked about group home liaisons. A couple of folks had reached out. Um, sounds like with varying levels of success, uh, but I guess, again, going back to Natalie, seeing is there any other members we should be trying? Is there, are there higher up people? Are there other new names that we should go to? Um, 
So we might need to regroup and think about a different uh, way to do that. Then we, uh, Chris offered this new transportation service, which we thought would be a, a prime place that we could advertise this, which is a, a resource, an opportunity for folks with disabilities. Um, and I think that is my minutes and my to-do items. That sound about right? Anything I missed? No? Sounds good. Yeah, we kept you over time. Makes up for all the time that we ended early, doesn't it? I'll have to say this. The committee's done more in the last two meetings than they did last year. I mean, John, you know I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pulling your hair out like me. Oh my God. You know, just, just to give somebody, give you some, uh, some guys some thought. Uh, I am uh, helping uh, Jay with the golf situation. I've been doing it for years. But it's really interesting if you can get yourself involved with something like that. There, The parents are there and you just talk to the parents and you can just listening to the parents, you can basically see the problems that they're, they're facing. So uh, I would think if you can get involved with Special Olympics or with the park and recs where you have this where you can see the parents. I think that's a good way of getting information, really. So I know okay. I've, I've gotten a lot of information that way too, so. Definitely invite them. Yeah, if, if I can add um, one more thing, um, Julie and I were gonna meet with Natalie and that meeting never went off the ground with regard to um, the um, the five Ks in town. We were going to try to include, make them more inclusive. Do you remember that? Yep. Okay. So, um, Julian, should we just try it? Try it again. Try to launch that meeting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can send a letter to you. You can send it to Natalie. It doesn't look as though there are many. Um, I don't think the five Ks have started out yet. I've seen some cancellations. So they. We're really probably talking about next fall. So, um, you know, we have time, but let's, you know, probably it takes time just to get things, you know, moving parts going. So, um, all right, I'll send you an email and then we'll try to start, restart that. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. I got that yeah. on my list. And then I will uh, put this all together for some minutes to approve last meeting, this meeting. And sounds like we have some to-do items for the next meeting and um, well, I'll keep track of our emails. I include myself in that. I have 50,000 unread messages in my Gmail right now. We don't talk about that. <laughs> but I know when I see Jaleem's name, I take it seriously. So um, before we go, yeah, real quickly, did you, I know I was late again. I can't not echo that, <laughs> but um. Uh, did we go over what the responsibilities are as far as secretary and so because I may have missed that. Um, yeah, so Elaine can't talk because I she's she's I think can hear us but can't speak. So I I just mentioned that um, that would be the I think the role of the secretary moving forward. Um, but for these two meetings, I'll type up my notes. All right, then we're good. Okay. So we'll see those in the, um, like a week before the meeting kind of thing, or so we can, and sometimes it's good for everybody to make their corrections. Yes. And then, and then when we go, we just usually, uh, the time, the FaceTime then is just reading the meeting, the, the minutes with corrections. Perfect, I'm gonna type them up tonight. I made that promise here publicly. There you <laughs> go. Okay, thank you everybody so much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hold on before you hold on before you guys yep. go. We're recording. Um, I would like to call this meeting to, to adjourn. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Meeting adjourned. He's our parla parliamentarian there. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> okay. Have a good uh, evening. Bye, bye. 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 Bye.